check one two you need to do some um voice some vocal work deep lunges hello dan Heronbrook. hey craig how you doing man welcome yep to the insurance dudes how's it going good jason how you doing good good to meet you noticed just right off the bat dan that your artwork is slightly different than the artwork that jason has behind him <laughs> just just a bit slightly slightly that's funny jason broad will go really well yeah why don't you have an alf in between your pictures I sh you know i should good my wife would kill me though she wouldn't like that she's the, she's the decorator oh, oh. I'm, I'm no i'm no i'm no dummy i didn't <laughs> Pick and, choose, pick and choose your battles, right? Totally. My wife doesn't come here, hence. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my. I like it. Growing up. I, I like it. I noticed today he has both Alf and ET, so capturing both. I love it. You know, I'm, I'm re reliving, reliving my childhood. Yep. That's yep. what I'm trying to do every day. In this week's episode of Insurance Dudes, Craig Pretzinger and Jason Feltman meet Dan Herrenbrook, who needs to write around 500 items just to maintain his $18 million book. And get this, he's in Florida, where he can't even write property. How does he do it? He's gotten creative with marketing to drive quotes to his 10 producers. Want to learn about scaling your book? Let's do it. Yeah, well, why don't, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the uh, international mm -hmm. audience that we have? We are yeah. broadcasting to every continent except for Australia. Well, right now, no listeners in Australia. I'm out then. My, my wife is actually Australian, so uh, her, well, her grandmother is Australian, so. Can we get her to subscribe and then we will have a, we will have a listener in Australia? <laughs> we'll, we'll, have, we'll have an in. We have an in. Nice. Right? I've been looking for that in. <laughs> Now, my, uh, Daniel Harrenbrook, I am uh, uh, an Allstate agent since 2006, uh, moved down from Indianapolis to sunny Naples, Florida, um, to take over my father-in-law's agency, um, and he just retired in December. Um, we've got 43 years uh, of experience. He started it when he was 21 years old, and um, retired, in, retired in December. And That's awesome. Got, he's uh, got like 18 million in, in premium. Um, That's he's, it. He's on the he's on the All State he's in the All State Hall of Fame. So I'm you know no pressure. No pressure. To steer this ship. Uh, right. But it's a it's a it's a good business. I've got you know I'm I'm, I'm a blessed man. I've got people who good people who work for me and and with me and. Um, we're just trying to grow it, you know. I want to be in the All-State Hall of Fame one day. Mm -hmm. Get that big bronze, bronze bust. So, goals. That's awesome. Yeah. What, was the hardest, what was the hardest part taking over, filling in for such big shoes? Getting him to back off a little bit, honestly. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a guy, a guy who's been, I, I say that somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but you got a guy who's been uber successful for 40 years. It's not an easy thing to, to step away and, and give the reins uh, over. So it, to getting, getting that, navigating that, what is something you need to do versus what is advice? <laughs> you know, there's a thought, there's a fine line between that. So, but uh, we're, we're blessed. We're blessed. We, we spend a lot of time, uh, not talking about the business outside of the business, um, you know, and, and family dinners and, and, and the like, so that we can have a you know, working and, and fruitful relationship in the business. How, how, have you, how have you been created the situation where you can turn it off? Because we talk to a lot of agents and especially the, the newer agents that jump in, you know, they're talking about, they answer the email while they're at dinner at, you know, eight at night. And, and, you know, for me, that's not business leverage. And, and I think Jason agrees. And yep. you as well. you, it's, it's, it's priorities. It's priorities. You got to work, you know, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to, uh, to work late. Um, but I, I got into this business 
out of the corporate world because I wanted some freedom. Um, freedom to go watch my kids play sports, freedom to, uh, to do those things. So I'm, I'm, I'm always available. Um, but, uh, you know, my priority is my family. And, you know, when I leave here, it might be six o'clock or six 30 at night. Some nights if we don't have anything going on, um, as a family, but when I leave here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm off, I'm off duty, you know, mm-hmm. there's an emergency. So That's it's good. all, That's it's good. all priorities. Awesome. You know, I always tell, I always tell my staff, Oh, always be at work, but that doesn't mean you're always working, you know, just be available. You know, I, I, it, simple, simple things. Like if you know, you're going, you know, I, my, my son, my eight year old son has, has to get allergy shots. Um, about once every six weeks now um and every 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 six weeks every time i go in there i wear i wear an all-state branded shirt why because people see it and they want to tell you're an all-state guy and they just start talking i can't tell you the number of policies i've written because i was wearing a shirt i didn't go in there with the intent of working per se but i'm always at work so always represent kind of philosophy representing that brand yeah your brand. yeah Every, everything you do do it with a purpose and then it's easier and easier you know once your purpose is is uh, is defined it becomes easier and easier well and it helps to have 18 million in premium that, that's not a bad starts, thing it, it starts <laughs> exponentially right there's so many policy not, holders yeah um, that that it just it's sure. like a wildfire Sure. And we've talked a lot about phases of an agency. What are some of the biggest challenges for when you get to that size? Growth. You probably wouldn't have. It's, it's just growth. It's, you know, we're, you, 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 you get to this size and you retain 90% of your business. You're losing a million dollars in premium a year before you ever, <laughs> before you break even. So you have to write a million plus in premium to just to, just break even. So it's, it's, it's the struggle of um, watching, watching what goes in, you know, goes out the back door versus having, you know, separate staff to, to grow it, to bring new business. You know, and it it, it can mean it'd be a lot for me trying to juggle both sides of that coin. And what do you guys do in um, marketing strategies for, for growth? You know, I, I'm a big proponent of, I've talked to people about marketing and everybody's got their own uh, opinion as to what's good. What's is there, there's no, there's no such thing as a silver bullet in marketing. The, the successful people are, are the ones who find things that work even a little bit and then do it over and over and over and over and over again. Um, you know, it's, that, that's, that's the key. I've, I've had, I've got a lady who, um, uh, is my, I call her my external marketing director. She drives around and drops off business cards and candy and internet leads and, and things to about 150 or so mortgage brokers and real estate offices in our county. And she does it every week. She hits, a, hits them on like a three week rotating scale. And, uh, you know, she just does it over and over and over again. And then you know, there's, she's, she laughs. She said, there's some people who just know me as the candy lady, <laughs> candy, but they want to give their business to the candy lady. It's, it's, it's just relationships, but whatever you decide to do, just do it, commit to it and do it over and over and over again to work itself out. That's a cool, that's a cool strategy. And, and how long has she been doing that? I don't know, 18 years. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it started well. She, let me back up. We've been doing that eighteen years. Uh, it started off with my mother-in-law, and my mother-in-law stopped doing it probably I don't know three four years ago. And then my current lady's been doing it for like four years. That's so, cool. Yeah, I I know that but, people will will jump in and ask ask the numbers on that. Would you go into that? I, I'd love to hear. You know, so okay, she hits. X number of places out of those X number of places, 
on a monthly, because I know you track this stuff, right? On, on a monthly basis, how many referrals do you get from that activity? We, we write, on average, we write 150 pol homeowners policies a month. Um, and, you know, I, you probably directly, directly attribute 125 of those to mortgage referrals, lender referrals. I mean, they come in here all day, all day, every day. So yep. some, you know, some months are better than others, especially in, in, in Southwest Florida, you know, it's a very seasonal uh, area, a lot like the Phoenix Scottsdale area, you know, where the, uh, the population triples in uh, October and then reduces by a third in mm -hmm. June. Um, so, you know, you have a couple of months that are lean for, for us. It's just like for every year, every year for us, March is a, is a lean month it's that transitional month between when people are starting to pack up and go home and you know, nobody's really coming down here. So you just plan for that. And then, you know, November every year for us is a banner month because everybody's just getting down to Naples and the activity and is booming and there's nothing I can do to really control that. That's, you know, that's, that's nature. That's the nature of where I live. So you just plan for it. You plan for March being a little lean and November being a great month. And, and uh, you go from there. And as long as you're consistent with that activity, then yeah. they're going to think of you in November when they show up. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. How, about how many places does she hit? Uh, 100, 100, 150 or so. 150. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's a lot of yeah. Snickers bars. It's a lot of Snickers bars. Yeah. And it's, you know, I don't know if, you know, my, ge geographically down here, it's, it's the Naples, Fort Myers area. So she's probably driving, I don't know, 35 miles north from our office and probably 20 miles south. So if you take that as a radius, was that, you know, maybe a 45, 50 mile radius from the office? You know, not so much east and west because we're about three miles from the water. Mm -hmm. she runs out of real estate pretty quickly going going west. But you know, as she so it's a it's a pretty pretty big geographical area that she that she hits. That's awesome. Cool. So you just create a route. You say, "Here, here's the list." Boop, 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 and she yep. just hits her hits her places. Yep, that's it. And she's she's great. She's a she's a single mom well, with two kids and, and it's worked out and she, you know, she also operates my Facebook page and does all the digital stuff behind the scenes and work takes mailers out and the little things, stuff on stuff's envelopes and does all the things for me, but it's a lot of work that she can do from home. So it works for her, you know, she's, she's texting me before at nine o'clock at night. She's got this thought about putting something up on the Facebook page and she wants to get it approved before she actually does. And so it's great. It works it works for me. It works for her. She does a great job, you know, so we're, we're blessed with it. Blessed in that way. That's awesome. So coming into this business from the corporate world, what was your hardest, what was the biggest challenge? Cause that's a, that's a big agency to, you know, it, 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 well, it, I worked here for what, 12 and a half years before I took it over. So, okay. When I came in, I was, I was green. I was, my, my background, my degree is in finance. Um, it's funny, I actually wanted to, wanted to be an attorney growing up and then went to college and realized what law school actually entails, you know, and, and I, I, didn't, I didn't have that kind of, I, di I didn't have that kind of gumption. Um, so I, I got a degree in, in finance and business administration as a, uh, as a, financial planner for about six weeks out of college. Um, you know, and, and I learned very quickly the first, when I was first working there, the, the guy in our, our orientation class to say 95% of you are not going to make it out of the first year. And he was right. Because financial planners, you start, especially out of college, you know, Hey dad, you've been working for 40 years. Let me, you know, let me handle your retirement money. That's how you start your business. You don't know anybody. If right. you talk about pressure, 
you know, forget it. I learned very quickly it wasn't for me, but I always liked the sales. I always liked people, talking to people. Um, so I got in with Frito-Lay um, and started doing route sales for them. So I had, I don't know, 15 or 20 grocery stores on my route and got to know the store managers and, and things. But, you know, it, it's, it's just relationships. You know, it's, it, that's all it is. If you, if you're good with people and you, you, you genuinely enjoy people and, and uh, talking, you're going to be successful in this business. You just gotta keep your head down and do it over and over and over again. It's repetition. Yeah. Is, is your dad involved now? Only you- from only only from a business standpoint, you know, from a ten thousand foot view looking down, he's uh, he and I have business meetings on how to grow and how to move the business. But as far as a day to day, you know, he he doesn't come in and really talk to the staff anymore. And you know, I'll I'll call him in every now and then for in, in our sales meetings and stuff, and he'll he'll throw an old, you know a trick or two that worked in nineteen eighty nine, you know, out <laughs> that we could try and bring back, you know, but. Now, by and large, he's 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 removed from the day to day side. Just have him sit over on the off to the side and work the microfiche. Yeah, right. That's right. He, he knows how to <laughs> do that. He's told story. He's told stories about you know back back in the day of actually having to hand rate auto policies. You know, they didn't have computers when he first started. You know, he was actually in the the booth at Sears. You know, and and uh, they would actually hand rate auto policies. You know, it's remarkable. Somebody wouldn't disclose a uh, somebody wouldn't disclose a speeding ticket or something, and you know, you rate it by hand, and then they find it. You know, after the fact, and then the rate goes up, and you got to go and explain those. You know, it's not not like it is today with the touch of a button. You know, every day about everything. It was so yeah. slow. There's a there's a woman here in in Tucson that owns a Hawaiian restaurant, and we got you know I had my had one of my shirts on, so she said, right. "Oh, I used to work for an Allstate agent in Hawaii, and yeah. you know, back in the early '80s." And, and she said, "Like so, there was that they were hand rating it, but then they also had to they had to ship the paperwork from yeah. Hawaii to to Chicago." Right. So yeah. think of the lag time before the underwriters right. even look at it. And then they would right. have a problem with it, send it back. And it's so yep. it would take weeks for a policy to issue. And, you know, yeah. you're making right. eight bucks a year off it. It's just yep. great. I, I mean, <laughs> yep. and now here we are, you know, at the red light. There's some people. <laughs> you know. here, we, here, here we are sitting in Florida and Arizona having a, having a conversation. Right. You know, right. Just it's technology. amazing. It's it is crazy. crazy. So uh, what, what do you find right now? What's your biggest challenge in the agency? Managing staff, just like everybody else, managing staff. How, how many staff do you have? I've got, I've got 11 counting myself. Cool. So and are you guys departmentalized? We are. Yeah. I've got two, uh, I've got two retention, two young ladies who work on retention. Their job is to call clients all day, every day. Um, we've got one pers- administrative assistant and a second who's kind of floats between those two departments, and then everybody else is sales. You know, and the administrative people they do all the endorsements and mortgage changes and those type type thing. Check the mail, you know, do all do all of that stuff, uh, and then I've got everybody else is on in sales, trying to grow it the jack of all trades you know i i I try and keep my i try to keep myself to the the quote unquote difficult clients or the more the more intense clients we have you know who has the auto home personal umbrella boat and maybe some life insurance with us you know if if you've got a seasonal condo down here probably not going to talk to me so yeah. we just kind of, that's how we that's how we just kind of we try and kind of departmentalize it a little bit so i mean i say that so you know if they want to talk to me they can talk to me but everybody's kind of my gatekeeper in that because i you can you can get you can get lagged up in a hurry 
Yeah, you can definitely get bogged down. Yeah. yeah. Rabbit holes. Right. <laughs> well, old rabbit holes. Yeah, some little thing that starts off with do you have a minute can end up where now you have to call <laughs> RBC. Or, or, or an afternoon, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they need yeah. to they need to they just bought a new car and change they need to change out a car. Yeah. 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 No, I'm gonna so, get you over here. I know that um, she's gonna do a much better job helping you on that. So yeah. And you, you know, like everybody else, you 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 have some of those clients who they only want to talk to Dan. And that that's that's fine. You know, I've got one lady who just refuses to give her credit card to anybody else in the office but me. And that's fine. She's 82 years old too, so you can give a little grace where grace is due. So we always yeah. promise the listeners that we're they're going to get some juicy tidbits. I think that that um, from a you know from a marketing or uh, new business acquisition standpoint, and obviously you have a lot of different lines in the in the lake here. Yeah. Um, so having the having uh, what's her name? I, the the marketing lady Dana. Yeah. So, yeah. so you have Dana. You have Dana going around to the 150 or so loan officers handing out Snickers. Yeah. Um, and then there's got to be some other significant. Yeah, we do. We do. We that. do a lot of. We do a lot of direct mails, uh, direct okay. campaigns. Um, I'll buy. I'll buy internet leads periodically. Uh, you know, my, I'm, my opinion on internet leads is you don't buy them to sell. I know Craig, you and I talked about that a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking. You, you yeah. don't. I don't buy them with the intention of selling them. The day we get them, I buy them for the cross date. Because uh, an internet lead, you know, typically you call them and you're the seventh person that's called them and they're talking about their car insurance that day. But six months later, you know, they, they're ready to talk. So you buy their name and number is what you're buying out of that. So, so we'll do that periodically. I don't do that. Um, I don't do that, you know, on a, con on a consistent basis. I'll, I'll buy them for maybe three months a year and then keep the, you know, keep working the cross dates. Cause you know, all, all this is, if you want to grow, it's, it's opportunity. You know, the more people you talk to, the more policies you're going to sell and uh, trying to keep that pipeline full. What's your number one advice that you would, that you'd offer any new agent that's starting out? Just stick with it. You know, it, it, it'll all work out. People give up too easily on things. In, you know, mm -hmm. my, in my experience and you know it, it's not always going to be good months it's not always going to be um you know i, I go home at night and uh you know beat my head against the wall use my sounding <laughs> board not every day not every day is, not every day is a great day it's just not um you know but specifically for for the agency owners uh, out there you know number one advice i'd give you is don't let your staff see you having a bad day. Keep, yeah, that's stuff, good. keep, keep that stuff for home. You know, never, there, there are things that Allstate does as a company that makes me want to, you know, just doesn't make any sense, but you'll never hear me bad mouth Allstate to my staff. You know, that's, that's who I work for. You know, that's, that's, that's my number one company that I represent and, and I believe in their product. Do they do everything perfectly? Nope. State Farm. Neither does USAA. Neither does you know anybody. Um, but uh, you'll never hear me. You'll never hear me uh, uh, say a detrimental word to him to my staff. My wife. That's a different. You know, <laughs> behind closed doors, you know, that's different. Different story, you know. And then you get it out and you move on. You come back the next day, and things are always better the next day. Yep. If you had to do it all over again, from when you started with Allstate, what would you, what's the one thing you would do differently? That's a or good is question. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think I did. I, first of all, I, I'm blessed. I walked into a pretty good situation. I am married the right girl. Um, and, and from a business standpoint, not from a personal standpoint and from a business standpoint. So I walked in and I was trained by, um, by someone with a, a world of experience. So I can't speak to the, the guys out there who are starting scratch right now, who don't have any experience in, in 
uh, in the insurance world. I, that's, that's foreign to me. Um, you know, so, you know, there's not a lot that I would, there's not a lot that I would do different. You know, I just be a sponge, learn it and learn, learn coverage, learn, learn what makes you, uh, different from everybody else. Even the other Allstate agents, you know, I tell, I tell my staff, I don't, I don't see the state farm guys in, ta in town as my competition. I see the other Allstate guys as my competition. What makes me different? State farm guys sell another product. I can't control what state farm guys sell. That's all their, their business. I can't compete against that. It's my product versus their product. But the guy down, the Allstate guy down the street sells the exact same thing that I can, that I can get an offer. Why should they take me over him? or her as the case may be. So that's, that's kind of the, the forefront of my mind all the time. That makes sense. So it sounds like the two, the two nuggets you kind of, kind of gave as advice is a perseverance, um, just stick with it. Right. And then yeah, uh, the relationships. Yeah. It's kind of been a, a, a common. Thread. Absolutely. And, yeah. and everything, everything else will take care of itself. It will all fall back and fall into place. I like it. It really will. So. Cool. What, what's your, uh, if you went to go grab fast food around there, what, <laughs> what's your favorite place? You know, I, I, there's a McDonald's right by the office <laughs> and I Man. haven't been there outside of their coffee. Their coffee is abnormally good. I don't get it. <laughs> McDonald's food, as in, in general, is just awful. But their coffee in the morning, it's legit. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a Subway here I go to a lot. Um, there's a, 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 a Taco Bell down the street that I've hit up a couple of times. But, but that's, that's about it. Close <laughs> to us, anyway. Awesome. What's the transition from, from where you were going to Florida? What's it culturally? It was not, it was, well, it, it took me about a year um, to, to really like it. It was not a hard decision. Um, when we first started talking about it, you know, I, I didn't want to do it the same year we got married um, and, and switch careers and move across the country and do all of it all at one time. Um, That's a lot. I had a, you know, I, I, at the time I was a district manager. So I had like nine guys who ran routes for free LA underneath me. And one guy called me at like 10 o'clock at night. He was on his way to the hospital, so he couldn't run his route. And he left his, the depot at like 2.30 in the morning to get his route was like an hour away from the depot. And, you know, so who are you going to call to run a route on, you know, four hours sleep? To, so I just said, I'll do it, you know. And so I went home, slept for like three and a half hours, got up. First thing I said when I turned the truck on in the morning was it was seven degrees outside. And that was the day I decided we were going to Florida. Because <laughs> we, were, we were planning on going, you know, we were planning on getting and working for another year and then making the move like in 2007. And I just said, you know, what are we doing here? Like, let's just do it. Rip the Band-Aid off and, and go. And, you know, seven degrees, they can, they can, that's one of the things I don't miss about Indianapolis. Yeah. That's brutal. That's it's, brutal. it's awful. It's awful. You know, I'm, I do miss, I do miss the city, you know, being able to go down and go downtown on a Sunday morning and try and get Colts tickets. And if you don't, you just go across the street to the sports bar and watch the Colts game with, you know, 150 of your closest friends, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, where I am, I'm like two hours from Miami and two hours from Miami. So if you want to do something, you know, in the city, you got to plan to do it you know so i missed that little bit of th that little bit of it but but uh, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't go back certainly not in january <laughs> right you'll uh, yeah i would take i would take the humidity over that that's just <laughs> yeah. oh brittle yeah, it, it's brutal we have the weather trifecta we uh, represented on this call, Arizona, California, Florida. I mean, you, right. <laughs> everybody else is envious. <laughs> That's well, funny. cool. Uh, anything else that, that you can think 
I know we, we sort of touched on advice for, for new agents or, or anybody buying an agency. Um, how, how about that? How about somebody who's buying an agency? Um, you know, those fundamentals that you bring up, I think are so important. Yeah. I, I mean, I just know, know the book, you know, do your, do your due diligence. If you're buying a, if you're buying a book, know the book and know the staff, you know, look at those, look at those loss ratio numbers and, and those retention numbers and, and all of those things, because it, when you buy, when you buy a book, there's going to be a little bit of attrition. I mean, I, I, I took over from my father-in-law and there's been a little bit of attrition because everybody wanted to talk to Steve. Well, Steve's retired. Well, you know, I'm, leave, I'm leaving. Well, I'm Steve's son-in-law. So, you know, I'm still talking to the family. I don't know. I want to talk to Steve. You know, you, you're going to get those, you're going to get those people, you know? So, you know, if you've got, if you've got somebody who's a book of business, who's retaining at 70%, you can expect it to go to 60. That's not a good deal. You know, so, so no, do your due diligence before you, before you make that purchase. Awesome, Dan. Well, hey, we, we really, really appreciate your time. We're here. Uh, we're right at the, we went a little tiny bit over, but, but uh, thank you so much. You bet. Really yeah, thanks. That. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Guys. I'll, I'll see you on Tuesday on the uh, Agency Vault coaching call. So I'll be there. A little, little plug. And uh, yeah, we do appreciate you, man. Thank you so right, much. Man, appreciate it. All right. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Yeah. All right. Jason, good to meet you. Yeah, good meeting you. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Your Insurance Dudes podcast is sponsored by Agency Vault, an industry leader in agency coaching, hiring and retaining top talent, and sales training with the seven step trusted advisor sales framework. Are you up for the challenge? For $99, you'll get 28 days of access and an opportunity to join our private platinum coaching group. For more information, navigate to www.agencyvault.com. Hey, thanks for checking out the insurance dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.